Hey guys, Chris here, and you're watching Nature Here and Now. And you're also watching all these mosquitoes and flies just plague me. Uh, so uh, check this out. May uh, last month was a great time for you know wildlife and stuff starting up, especially if you're in New Jersey. Um, there was quite a lot of activity, and I was rather busy at work and with a bunch of other things happening. But when I had the opportunity, I headed into you know South New Jersey, and let me just tell you, there was quite a few reptiles breeding. So I'm at Tiger Beetle Ruin and I'm walking along just checking stuff out. I found some worm snakes and things like that. And I look down and, well, I find two box turtles in the process. These are eastern box turtles and they are, uh, as you can quite clearly see, the male is on top mounting the female. Unfortunately, um, when I discovered them, he was on his back, yet still in the female. And uh, I don't know if he just fell, turtles can fall. I sat down to film for quite some time, and he just kept on trying to mount her. I actually think that she was fertilized by that point, and she's like, look, I'm no longer in the mood. Box turtles can actually mate anywhere from April through October, but May is generally the time of year for them to do their nesting. Usually by that point, the female has been impregnated and she's gonna search around for a nest site, for a place to, to dig a hole and lay her eggs. And uh, she will lay anywhere from say one to eight little round white eggs, uh, which takes actually a few months to you know, gestate or for them to hatch, you know, develop and hatch. And, you know, depending on how warm it is, just like, you know, crocodilians, a warmer nest tends to produce more females while a cooler nest will produce more males, of course, right? So if you have it anywhere in the middle, depending on the region that you're in, that could ensure kind of a good mix of males and females. After they lay their eggs and bury the nest back up. You can't even tell that there was ever any activity in that spot. They camouflage and hide those nests so well that you would never find it. Even if you watch the turtle digging and burying it back up, you, you would never know. It's incredible stuff. And many turtle species will actually do several false nests to throw off predators. You know, the predator will come along and dig up the nest and it's like there's no eggs. And hopefully they'll act as decoys from where the real eggs are. And uh, well, it's just really neat stuff. Um, but while I'm filming them, that's when I discovered the beautiful black racer and I filmed, well, this video here. So when I was done filming that black racer, I actually kind of approached the area with those box turtles again and peered at them from a distance. He was still attempting to mount her and finally just moved away. And I feel bad if I killed his moment. I don't really think I did. I think that she was probably fertilized. Now, as you know, if you're in the Northeast especially, May is the time for turtles and amphibians to breed. Well, mostly the, the turtles. And unfortunately, many of them will be crossing the roads to get to you know their breeding sites or to find a female or to find an area to lay their eggs. And that's when most of them get killed because they gotta cross that road at least twice, right? And with all the traffic going by, even on a country road, the mortality rate for turtles is pretty high during May. Um, you know, it's best to leave them alone, but if you see a turtle crossing the road and it's safe enough, sometimes you wanna maybe escort them to the direction that they're going in, just to the other side. Um, if you're an adult, you know, if you're a child, just leave them be. You don't want to get hit by a car or chance getting a finger snipped off because some of these turtles can bite, especially when they're snapping turtles. Um, there's more to that story and I don't feel like sharing it because I turn around just to see uh, a giant red belly about to cross and a car got it. In South Jersey, May and June are really good months for finding eastern fence lizards almost everywhere. Not to mention the fact that you can find some five-line skinks and ground skinks and 
some of the other lizard species, but the, the fence lizards definitely rule the, the environments. And about a week before I saw those turtles, I actually spent a night out in you know, kind of the South Pines with some friends. And the next morning, I'm heading back to where I actually stashed my car, and I just hear fence lizards all over the place. Well, as I'm walking along, there's a female fancy sitting on, like, in front of me on the ground. And a male comes running up to her, uh, one head bob, and immediately he mounts her and starts doing the act. Now, I'm carrying all my camping gear on my back, and I have my camera kind of just unreachable at the moment. So I watched them for a couple of moments, and he did his stuff, and then they start to climb up the tree that was beside them and he just holds on to her kind of like a her backpack and so I get my camera out and I start to film it now unfortunately I missed the the act where he's impregnating her but you can still see the clear difference between the male fence lizard and the female you know he's got all that beautiful cobalt blue it's an iridescent blue that's on his belly side and around his chin and everything like that and it's just gorgeous looking she is a little bit larger than him you know now, the fence lizards, she'll lay her eggs in the soil, you know, just a, a few centimeters beneath the soil surface, but it'll take 10 weeks or so for those eggs to hatch. And she doesn't lay a whole lot of eggs. You know, again, probably you know, somewhere between four and, and eight eggs is all she'll lay. But as I said, there are fence lizards everywhere. So even if just a few of those eggs survive to adulthood, that still increases the population of fence lizards. And there are all sorts of things that eat fence lizards. You know, hognose snakes, lots of birds, uh, mammals will prey on them, especially, you know, um, foxes and animals like that. So there are plenty of things hunting the, the fence lizards. So it's really good that they have the successful breeding. Older female fence lizards can actually lay several clutches in a year, and they can breed anywhere from April to August. They only live, let's say, maybe five years. Um, we don't know for sure, but about five years is their lifespan from what we can guess as, you know, biologists. And, uh, well, <laughs> that was just two more breeding reptiles that I found within a week. But there's more. May and June tend to be the busy seasons for me at work at the Nature Center because that's when we get a lot of school programs. And that makes it difficult for me to get out and film and work on my channel sometimes. But while I'm doing some programs at work, I hear some rustling in the bushes, you know, before the group gets there. And I look over to see something that I see almost every year. And that is several garter snakes sort of doing uh, a breeding uh, ritual. <laughs> That's where you've got one female and then several males are all trying to either compete or fertilize her, hoping that they can, you know, increase their gene pool. So in early spring, garter snakes will come out of their hibernaculums where they spend, you know, where they overwinter underground, and immediately they'll be in the mood. You know, the, the males usually come out first and they start spreading out pheromones. And the females will smell those pheromones. She'll pick them up and she's like, yeah, you know, I'm in the mood. And she'll go over there uh, to breed. And then immediately afterwards, several males will all kind of swarm her or get on top of her. And then there's usually one lucky male if she chooses so. Cool thing about garter snakes is they can actually store the male's sperm and use it at another time when they better prefer the conditions or something. Now, they are oviviparous, okay, um, which pretty much means that they give birth to live young. They still have eggs, but those eggs will hatch within the female. And they sometimes those clutches, you know, there will be many babies. Um, there's such variety. One time I saw one that had 14 baby snakes. I kid you not. That was years ago. Um, so it's just, it's just really fun to watch. I would love to actually see those baby garter snakes. They're only so long when they come out. You know, six or seven inches. I've seen pretty much those are the small ones. Anyways, I tried to film it a bit. You see several males coming around this larger female. The females are always larger when it comes to the reptiles and most wildlife because that allows them to hold more eggs or, in this case, keep the eggs in them for longer and uh, allow further development, you know, for the embryos and stuff, which is pretty neat. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You didn't get to actually see any real action, but you got to see several reptilian species breeding in May. That means that come June um, or later this summer, there's going to be a lot more reptiles to find and appreciate. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm Chris Ignato, and I'll see you in the next video.